Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 8 which is all about Earth's topography per hemisphere. This will be the third quarter topic, week 1 and day 2. And this lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to First is to identify the two types of Earth's crust, the continental and oceanic, in terms of thickness, density, and composition. The second one is to explain how the interaction between continental and oceanic crust contribute to Earth's landforms and topography. And the third one is to show appreciation of earth structure and surface composition as evidence of its dynamic nature by answering the guided questions. For the work example, the teacher will show figures of earth contrasting land and water distribution per hemisphere. A hemisphere is half of a sphere. The northern and southern hemispheres mark the two halves of the Earth horizontally, while the western and the eastern hemispheres do it vertically. Now let us understand the Earth's crust, the foundation of topography. Continental crust, it is a thick, less dense rock forming continents and land masses. It composed primarily of granite and sedimentary rocks, and this crust average of 30 to 50 kilometers thick and creates the elevated platforms where the most terrestrial life thrives. While the oceanic crust, it is thinner, a denser basaltic rock forming ocean floors, and only 5 to 10 kilometers thick and this crust is constantly being created at mid-ocean ridges and destroyed at subduction zone making it geologically young. Earth's outermost layer forms a thin rigid shell that serves as the foundation for all the surface features. Tectonic plates within the crust constantly move and interact creating the mountains, valleys, and and ocean basins that define our planet's topography through processes of collision, separation, and sliding motion. Now let us compare the land here and the water hemisphere. So the land hemisphere, it is centered on Europe and Africa, and this hemisphere contains approximately 80% of the Earth's total land area. It encompasses most of the North America, Europe, Asia, and Northern Africa, creating a concentration of continental land masses. While the water hemisphere, the center is the New Zealand in the Pacific Ocean, and this hemisphere is dominated by vast oceanic expanses, and it contains most scattered islands, parts of the South America, Australia, and Antarctica, with water covering about 89% of its surface. Now let's talk about the southern hemisphere, the ocean dominant hemisphere. So it is a limited land area. It contains only 32% of the Earth's land including the Australia, Antarctica, South America, and parts of Africa. This scattered distribution it creates a unique isolation effects on evolution and climate. So Australia island continent with diverse ecosystem while Antarctica, it is an ice-covered landmass affecting the global climate, and the South America, it is Andes Mountains and Amazon Basin. Now let's talk about the oceanic dominance of Southern Hemisphere. So it is vast ocean expanses including the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and Southern Oceans cover approximately 89% of its hemisphere surface, creating massive water bodies that drive global circulation patterns. For the Pacific Ocean, it is the largest body on Earth, and for the circumpolar, currents around the Antarctica and island chains and archipelagos. 
Now let's talk about the landforms shaping each hemisphere. So the first one is the mountain formation. So it is a tectonic collisions create dramatic mountain ranges. So the Himalayas in the north result from Indian collision with Asia, while the Andes is the south from form oceanic plate subduction beneath the South America. The second one is the Plateau development. Extensive elevated flatlands characterize both hemispheres. Northern examples include the Siberian and Tibetan Plateaus, while the southern example the features of Brazilian highlands and Patagonian steeps. The third one is the coastal evolution. So coastline complexity varies dramatically. A northern hemisphere features intricate shorelines with forts, bays, peninsulas, while southern hemisphere showcases vast oceanic islands and extensive ice shelves. After the discussion, the students will answer the following essential questions. For the lesson activity, have the students analyze the figure 3 of the Earth's surface, contrasting the oceanic and continental crust, and answer the guide questions that follow. For the first guide question, based on the figure 3, which is thicker, continental or oceanic crust? And for the second guide question, what happens when the oceanic crust collides with the continental crust? And for question number three, what does your answer in item two imply about the densities of continental and oceanic crust? When we talk about continental crust, it is made mostly of the granitic rocks. This form of crust is thicker and less dense than other types. The Earth's continental crust, which is made up of plains, mountains, ranges, and a variety of geological features, creates the continents and bigger land masses. Because of its composition and thickness, it is less dense than the oceanic crust. While the oceanic crust it is mostly composed of basaltic rocks, and the oceanic crust is thinner and denser than the continental crust. Underwater volcanic activity, deep sea trenches, and mid-ocean ridges are characteristics of this type of crust, which reside beneath the ocean basins. The sea floor spreading and the subduction processes constantly build and destroy oceanic crust. Thank you for watching so don't forget to like and subscribe.